yeah, those are blue switches. What's up guys, it's Nick. I haven't said that in a while and honestly, it feels pretty good. Lately, I've been really into keyboards, and with me probably building a custom keyboard in the near future, I thought it would be a good idea if we took a look at each of these different price points of keyboards until I eventually build one. That means I'm going to be reviewing a few keyboards to see the difference between the price points, build quality, and just how they look and feel. With that being said, let's look at an entry level keyboard starting with this one. The Deeria DK63. You know, I've said this a couple times, but I love minimal branding. Clean and simple is just better. Diving straight into the box, you're immediately greeted by the keyboard. And below that, the manual. I would highly recommend you take a look at this because the keyboard might come in Bluetooth mode. In case you're switching it to wired mode, you will need to know what the keys are. But we'll see the functions a bit later. Other than that, we get a white USB Type-C cable with the weirdest head I've ever seen, as well as a keycap remover tool. These types of keycap remover tools with the prongs are much better than these ones that can scratch up your keycaps. Always use the ones with the prongs. So with this tool, let's remove a keycap, take a look at it, and also take a look at the switches. Let me start out by saying that this keycap is made out of ABS plastic. That might not mean anything to most of you, but ABS plastic is known to get that grease glow. If you have about $15 to $20 to spare, I would highly recommend you get an extra set of keycaps, especially if they're double shop PVT. But below the keycap, we expose the switch. And yeah, those are blues. I actually wanted browns, but they said a keyboard with blue switches for me to review, so we'll live with it. Before we go on to see how it sounds, we do need to clarify the differences between the DK61 and the DK63. So listen closely because this is probably the most important part of the video. The DK63 is not hot swappable and it comes with ABS plastic keycaps. The DK61, however, is hot swappable and it already comes included with double shot PBT keycaps. With this said, them being around the same price point, I would highly recommend you go for the hot swap option just because having it won't really affect you in the long run. But most people won't swap their switches, so if that doesn't phase you, just go for the DK63. Coming back to the blue switches, I've actually always wanted to try them. They're clicky, loud, obnoxious, but they're pretty fun to use. Okay, they're not really my preference, but besides the blues, you can get this keyboard with reds, blacks, and browns. It's really up to you and it's personal preference. Stabilizers are pretty average. They're not the best, they're not the worst, but overall, it's a very pleasing typing experience. Taking a look at the keyboard, overall, it's pretty aesthetic. White keyboards just have that clean feeling, and with it being a 60%, it's compact but still sturdy with a decent font and layout scheme. Just for size comparison, this is a TKL against a 60% keyboard. You can immediately notice the difference in size, both in width and length. Build quality is pretty nice. Even though it's made out of hard plastic, it still has that hefty feeling to it. On the back, you don't get the pegs to raise the angle on the DK63. Instead, you get four rubber grips as well as the Bluetooth on off button. And speaking of the Bluetooth, it comes equipped with multi-device Bluetooth up to three devices. And you can freely swap between these devices using the function C, X, and Z key. I told you guys about reading the manual beforehand, but here we can see how we swap between the wired and Bluetooth mode. Just hit function R and you'll swap between them. Battery life is set to be around eight hours with the lighting on. However, I haven't really tried the Bluetooth mode, so if anyone knows how long the battery lasts, let me know in the comments down below. Something of note with this keyboard is actually the software. 
I was properly surprised when I found out how easy it was to find and how intuitive it was to use. Here you can reconfigure each key, add profiles, sync between devices, add macros, enable program specific keys, and much more. You can also swap between the program RGB schemes, which offer a wide array of colors. But get this, you can actually program your own colors, and each key is individually backlit and customizable, which is amazing for this price point. All in all, the software was really thought out. But not everything is perfect, and this keyboard does come with its faults. While the build quality is fine and hefty, we do get this thunk. And even though you can open it and fill it with foam, this is the budget entry level keyboard and I really don't expect many people to mod it, which honestly feels like a major oversight. The USB-C input, while it's nice to have, it's on the left side of the keyboard. And me personally, I prefer to have everything to the right side, but that's just me being nitpicky. Then there's the performance issues. Some users have experienced connectivity issues and others have just said that the keys stop working altogether. I haven't had any of these issues happen to me specifically, but I'll be using the keyboard a bit more just to check out and see if anything happens. While every device has its own faults and issues, this keyboard specifically has been really praised and rated on sites like Amazon, making it a pretty safe bet if you're looking for a budget keyboard. Do keep in mind though, that with tech, you may receive a piece of faulty hardware. Now, what are my thoughts on these keyboards? Well, honestly, they're pretty decent. The budget keyboard market is very competitive, but that makes it very healthy for development. With the RK61 going hot swap, and having other options like the GK61, I think that the DK61 specifically is a very good option having both hot swap, double shot PBTs, as well as being under $50. This makes it a really good option for someone that's just starting out with the mechanical keyboard market. Gaming wise, it works just fine as most keyboards don't really give you an edge when playing. With this budget price point, honestly, you're just looking for something that feels nice and works for you. Know that most keyboards around this price point are very similar to each other, but what makes the DK61 and DK63 really stand out is the software, which pretty much surprised me. It's just extremely good. I consider this a very enticing option if you're looking for a keyboard under $50. Also, quick disclaimer, I did get this keyboard sent out to me for review. However, I'm not being paid to say anything. They don't get to see this video before it's posted and all the opinions on the video are my own. But as always, what are your thoughts on it? Would you buy this keyboard or have you already bought it and are looking for information about it? I always ask what color keyboard would you get, however this time, I want to know what your favorite switch is. With this video, we start the road to building my own custom keyboard. Hopefully that happens sooner rather than later. But I'm gonna go edit some videos, I'm back to YouTube, and I'll see you later.